Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Christmas gifts, uh, that's our focus in these weeks leading up to Christmas. And, and really the, the springboard idea here is that Christmas uh, is really about the longing of every human heart. Uh, joy and, and peace and love and hope. Um, every human being on the face of the earth wants these things and, and knows that we need these things. And, and, and every single human being, it seems, at least in our society, uh, uh, even those who are not religious, re- religious at all, d- during this time, they dare to hope that things can be different. Um, you don't have to be a Christian uh, to be touched by the Christmas spirit. Huh? And, and, and we see that everywhere. Um, uh, we, we, we see the, a, great, uh, a great giving towards all kinds of charities. We see people giving gifts to one another, even gifts to people they don't really care for or don't really know very much either, right? Uh, pe- pe- people are giving gifts everywhere, uh, and, and they, they have this great hope that somehow things might be different, even though year after year things don't seem to change. Huh? Uh, during this time, there's that great hope within us, uh, and, and you, can't, you can't miss that. You just open your eyes and, and look around you. It's, it's a reality that, that we see. And, and so we asked this question. We said, uh, could it be that this universal need to hope for something better was put inside each of us to remind us that things can be better? And, and almost resoundingly, the answer has to be yes. I mean, just logically, where did this come from in all of humanity? Uh, they, they say that uh, you know, people want to attack Christmas and, and when we celebrate it, and they say, well, it used to be a pagan holiday. Well, why did the pagans hope that something could be better? Why did they have that within them? Why were the seasons established the way they were, this, this cycle of, of, of seemingly death and then life? Why did, why did that happen? And so as we open our eyes and we say, yeah, there's, there's something going on here that, that this was put into every single one of us that we, we hope for something better and we know that things can be better. And, and whether, you, whether you're, you're religious or not during this time, you, you live in that hope and you want things to be better. And the reality of Christmas is that Jesus brings those gifts that we can't grab for ourselves. Humanity can't give itself those gifts of hope and peace and love and joy. It's not within our grasp. They need to come from outside of us. They need to come from the one who put the longings within our hearts. And that's what Christmas is all about. The peace and joy and love and hope. (laughs) It only comes from above, from the one who was above and, and, and was born in a manger, came down to this earth. Last week, we, we focused on peace, and we talked about it as being the, in the eye of the storm. We, we acknowledged that, that, the, uh, that, that the hurt and the pain and, and the turmoil of, of this life will always be here, but somehow we can dwell like, uh, like in the eye of the storm, and we can do that in relationship with our God. And we focus on the idea that Jesus is our redeemer, meaning he comes to fix the stuff we can't. The greatest thing he fixes is that specter of death that's in front of every single one of our eyes. And instead of our final defeat, it becomes our greatest victory. And then he empowers us to have purpose in our lives as we live for him. We can serve him without fear. As we live in this relationship, this, this presence of Jesus, that's what the word Emmanuel means, God with us, right? As we live in his presence, in this peace that he gives us in the eye of the storm. And we can bring that peace into the lives of others and into the life of our world by his grace and, and in his power. Today, uh, we look at joy. <laughs> um, joy, and, and, and the best way I could think about this was a, a flooding of the heart. Uh, joy, I, I looked it up in a dictionary. I'm not going to do that every time, I don't think, but, but it seems like the dictionary at least gives me a place to begin because as I, as I talked to you today, when I said to, the, to that, that little one, I said, you know what joy is? And he looked at me and said, well, I, I'm not sure. What, how would you define joy, huh? 
Well, if you look it up in a dictionary, it's defined like this. One, intense happiness. I'll go along with that. Intense happiness. But the second one really hit me. The source of this intense happiness. The source. So that joy is not simply having a happy Joy is being in relationship with another and being filled up in that relationship of love. In our text uh, today, um, these two women, Elizabeth, who's the mother of John the Baptist and Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, neither one of whom have become mothers yet, they're just with child. Uh, they, um, they uh, marry the moment, uh, when the, it's seemingly the moment the angel has told her that she is with child and, and she's going to have the Savior. And, and with all of the upheaval that that brings in her life, now think about that upheaval, huh? To get, and, and think of the upheaval in Elizabeth's life as well, right? She's, she's way past the time when she should be having a baby. And so she gets all those concerns and those fears, okay, but she's having a baby. Mary goes to Elizabeth. And, and I believe these two model what this joy looks like. And they also show us the foundation for this joy. This joy um, is a joy of, of relationship. You remember uh, the, the, Christmas, the, bo- the book, The Christmas Carol, or, or the play, The Christmas Carol, with Scrooge, the Scrooge dude, right? He had, he had seemingly everything that uh, uh, folks work for right? He, he, he had all the money he needed and he could buy anything he wanted. But what was the famous line he always had? Bah humbug. Pretty far from joy, isn't it? Bah humbug. And then who, who was the other character? The, the tiny, tiny Tim, is that right? Yeah. He had nothing, right? In fact, he was sickly and he was probably going to die. But he was joyful. He had relationship with all of his family. And, and he, even, he even had a good heart towards Scrooge, didn't he? And all that was because he knew what Christmas was all about. That's what we'll see in these two. So Mary comes to Elizabeth and, and the baby John uh, kicks in her, you know, he's real excited and, 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 and Elizabeth knows that's because Mary is here with, and she brings the, the, the Christ with her uh, and she says, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Favored. You know, this, uh, when you read the Christmas accounts and the angels coming, and the, I, I want you to be aware of this word favored. It, it, the, the, um, the, the root word is grace. Grace, undeserved love. When, when I want you to do me a favor, I'm not saying I deserve it, right? I'm saying I need your grace. Hey, my car broke down. Would you do me a favor and, 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 and bring me to work? I don't deserve that. I'm asking you to do something. Uh, show me an act of love even though I don't deserve it. You see this in all of these accounts. It seems like the Lord just screams out on us that this relationship that will bring us joy is based on grace. Elizabeth says, Elizabeth says that I am graced that the mother of my Lord should come to me. I don't deserve it. When the angel appeared to Mary, he said, you have found grace with God. You don't deserve it. But God gives you this relationship. You're going to be the mother of our Lord. When the angels over Bethlehem appeared to the shepherds, they said what? Glory to God the highest and and, and peace on earth to those who are graced by God. On those upon whom the grace of God has come, all of us. The story of Christmas, the account of Christmas and everything that goes with it is relationship based on this grace. God comes to you in grace. You're not expected to measure up because you can't. He offers relationship 
in a love that forgives and receives. Receives you just as you are. You know, I know I've used this a lot, but I just can't get away from it. It's like when I, um, when I asked my Jane to marry me, and she did, and, I, and that was grace. It was an absolute grace. That's what relationship's all about. So, so she says to Mary, why am I so favored, why am I so graced that the mother of my Lord should come to me joy the foundation of it is finally relationship. It's not in what I'm experiencing right now. It's the one in whom I have relationship that transcends this experience. Elizabeth was going to have a tough day. <laughs> a tough time. Probably wouldn't live to see her little baby grow up very much. She was too old. And if she did, she saw him suffer horrible things. But she knew this relationship she had with God, so much so that she knew that the mother of our Lord visiting her was one of grace. And then she says to Mary, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his his promises to her. Grace and trusting that grace. This is the foundation of joy. I was going to end the children's sermon today with that tune, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. I didn't do it because I didn't want to embarrass one little boy up here, have him stay up here all that long, okay. (laughs) But that's what that song exudes. Jesus loves me. How do I know that? The Bible tells me. Grace and a faith that trusts that grace. That's the joy, the foundation of joy in our lives. Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ came, was, was born at Christmas time so that he might be your savior. Not because you deserved it or you earned it, but because God loves you so much that he gave up Jesus. These longings that we have in our heart, they were the longings that we were created for. We were created to have this perfect relationship with God in in perfect peace and and hope and, and joy and love. A joy that that fills us up and and overflows from us. Right now God's Spirit is touching your hearts. Even even if it's too early in the morning, you're still trying to wake up. He wants to touch your hearts in this moment. He wants you to know that you have found favor with God, grace, and that you can trust him. And you can trust him like a little boy or a little girl that's singing the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible tells me so. Mary responds, she says, my soul glorifies the Lord. I love that word glorify. Uh, glorify, it means my God's awesome, right? It's like a little boy or a little girl said, my dad is awesome, right? My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Take that word apart, rejoices. Joy, again, continuous joy. It's a verb form of joy. To be in joy is to live in joy. It's to have action in your life in joy. My soul glorifies the Lord, everything he's done for me, and so my spirit continuously has joy, continuously rejoices because of who God is, my Savior. Now why is that? What has God done for us? He has been mindful of the humble estate of his servant. Now you may be listening to me talk today and and thinking, yeah, but Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through right now. Christmas is a tough time for me. All I can think of is what I don't have. Yeah, I know that things are broken and and life's not what it should be, but you know, that makes it even more tough for me right now. The first thing that Mary says, the reason she has joy, 
is that God sees her and he's mindful of her. He sees you right now. He's mindful of you right now. Whatever your shadows and whatever your struggles, (laughs) whatever your challenges in your life right now, he sees you. There's a a verse in the Old Testament, you know, the children of Israel were enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years. Uh, and and there, there's a verse in there, it, it says there that God, that, that God has seen the suffering of his people. He's taken notice. Think of that, hundreds of years in slavery. How many folks thought that God didn't even notice them, that God was far, that God had t- turned his back on them, that God had forgotten them, God had never forgotten them. Joseph in, in the Old Testament, the guy with the, the many colored coat, right? He's thrown, in, in, he's thrown on death row for stuff he didn't do. God saw him. Samson, who because of his sin suffered horribly. God didn't turn his back on him. God saw him and was there for him. Whether your shadows and your darkness is because of something you have done, some fallop you've made in your life, some mistake, some sin, or whether it's because the world around is just the way the world is, or because it's a relationship where someone else has done something to you, God sees you. He takes notice of you. And the message of Christmas is that he is Emmanuel. God with you in this moment and in the next moment and in the next. Giving you his spirit and continuing to empower you to have this relationship by grace with this God who puts his arms around you and whispers of his love to your heart. He's mindful of where you're at. He doesn't run away from you. He's Emmanuel, God with you, right now. Mary goes on. She says, all generations will call me blessed. Quite an insight, isn't it? So Mary's saying that, that, that God is with me right now. He sees me. He, he sees that I am a virgin who is with child. And the laws say that they can ridicule me and stone me to death. And I'm not sure what my betrothed is going to do yet. Right? I don't know what the future holds, huh? but I trust that he sees me right now and I lay my future in his hands. All generations will call me blessed. Do you think that's true for you? Do you think all generations will call you blessed? Do you think you'll shine like the stars in the glory of heaven? Do you think all Christians will call you blessed because of who you are in Jesus Christ? Do you know that your future, your eternal future, is absolutely certain? Do you believe that? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is with you right now with his arms around you? He sees you, he's with you. And you believe that the future is yours. That was the source of Mary's joy. And she was blessed. You know what that word means? It comes from the Hebrew word baruch. And it does, doesn't mean that I'm blessed because I'm so good. It means that that's, it, it had the connotation of one kneeling before the king and receiving the gifts of the king. Mary was blessed. She was baruched by God because she knelt before him and received his gifts. His gifts of this wonderful grace of his presence and his powerful moving in her life and his gifts that her future was certain and sure all generations would call her blessed. All generations will call you blessed. This was the source of her joy. And then she says, it's all about him. He has done great things for me. (laughs) 
Your present and your future does not depend on you. Jesus Christ is, has, and will do great things for you. Brush is off. You have everything in him. And it all depends on him. What peace, what joy that must have given Mary. That she, think of the responsibility she felt. I'm the mother of the Lord. I better do something? What could she do? She was powerless. A little teenage girl. There was such strength and power that could squish her all around her. What joy this must have given her that he will do it. Where do you need that insight in your life? That he who gave up Jesus will also give you all things. And he will do it. Where do you need to let go and rest in this joy, be filled up in this joy that Jesus Christ has, is, and will do all things for you? Mary was filled with joy. She had this relationship of grace. She trusted it. She knew what it meant. She knew that God saw her. He was with her. She knew that her future was sure and certain. And she knew that she could lay herself in his arms because he would do it. That's the joy of Christmas to you. Think about joy, though. It, it, uh, when it fills you up, <laughs> you just want others to have it as well. Mary, this is an amazing thing to me. I know that, that the Spirit of God was on her, but still, Mary just didn't think about herself. She says, all these things are true for me. And then she said this, amazing. She says, His mercy extends to those who fear Him, have this holy awe and faith in Him, have this relationship of grace in Him. So, so His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. His mercy extends to you. Isn't it amazing? that this joy that Mary knew in Jesus so freed her to the point that she no longer looked at herself and her needs at all, but rather by the power of God's Spirit immediately turned outward and said, this is for everybody. This is offered to all. That's the action step for us, you see. Not only to receive this joy like a sponge, but to know that we're given this joy so that it pours out of us to everyone who's around us, to all people, to all generations. That's the power of the joy that God would pour into our hearts by His Spirit. A gift of grace that you can receive by faith to, to live in and to live in that, that God sees you. That God sees you. That God has done it for you, a grace to grow in, and a grace to share this joy that Jesus would give you at Christmas. 
Christmas is why Paul wrote these words. I'm sorry, t- just go to the next one for me. Christmas is why Paul wrote these words. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. The Greek word is agus. He's right here. He's, he's right here because he came to us. He is Emmanuel. Flesh and blood, it's all true. That you might know, live in, receive, and share his joy. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life never ending. Amen.